شكرا تراعدل وححترم الوقت والله so it, it, it's quite a challenge to talk about the present and future in 15 minutes but I'm gonna be so disciplined in this issue uh, I'm gonna go through very quickly in the uh, overview of therapeutic bronchoscopy uh, advances in diagnosis bronchoscopy EVIS will be covered by Professor Semra from Izmir Navigation bronchoscopy and uh, the future, of course. Uh, rigid bronchoscopy is very important, especially if you're going to perform interventional pulmonology. pulmonology. It's very important to be uh, trained in uh, using rigid bronchoscopy. It's a must. Uh, uh, it's not difficult, but you have to be trained. Introduction of rigid bronchoscopy needs general anesthesia, and usually intervention pulmonology need a teamwork of nurses and anesthesiologists because we deal with difficult cases and stage bronchogenic carcinomas etc and you can face uh, severe bleeding as well uh, that's the laser it's uh, that's a foreign I mean it, it, it's a mass inside here whether it's a foreign body or mass any any anyhow uh, bronchoscopy is very important in this uh, issue and to perform and debulk this mess. Uh, we have the laser, we have the uh, uh, electrocoter as well. Uh, however, the laser in our country assists a lot of problems concerning the uh, post sale service. We have two engines and two machines, but unfortunately, the the dealers didn't work well with us, so we perform usually the electrocotery. Uh, other modalities, uh, the heat modalities, we have the APC, argon plasma, photodynamic, which we don't have in Egypt. Brachycerapy has been used, and cryotherapy is available as well. Airway laser, of course, we know that the penetration is better. It's an untouched technique. It's just you shoot on the mass and you debulk it. The point is you have to be parallel to the wall of the trachea or the wall of the bronchus. Don't touch or don't uh, uh, put the laser beam perpendicular. It should be always on a horizontal level. Penetration is up to 10 millimeter. Electrocautery is very good. It can perform. That's the poor laser. It's definitely cheaper and it's the same technique but it's a touch technique you have to touch the mass and of course the patient should be grounded as well uh, the APC is excellent for hemorrhagic lesions superficial lesion we don't perform it to the bulk it's very poor in the bulking and the depth for intention is only two to three millimeters but it's very good for hemocoagulation or plasma coagulation. So if you get you face bleeding, you can perform an APC uh, to coagulate, and then you perform the electro after that. Uh, the stents are very important as well. In interventional pulmonology, we use them a lot. In our practice, in our department, in Champs, we use the silicon stents, the Dumont stents. They are much cheaper and. Uh, easy to be introduced through the pushers of the rigid bronchoscope and these are the large numbers these are the uh, Gimon stents this one this one and the Montgomery stents of course and so we use the usually the silicon stents this is the metallic stent a point of order here the metallic stent should never be used in benign lesions that's a red line never in benign lesions it's easy to, to be inserted and deployed, but it's very difficult to get it out. So never use the metallic stent in uh, benign lesions. Uh, sometimes the metallic stent can have a kind of metallic metal fatigue, so it's difficult to get it out and it can erode the trachea, etc. But in terminal cases or end-stage tumors, you can insert it. This is the silicon stent which we use. The, uh, Gimon stent, you, you, you need to have the, uh, the pusher to insert it. Use the, we use in our department the Brian 
a set of rigid scopes, not difficult to insert. The only problem of the Jumon stents or the silicon stents, the muco stasis. So you have to, every three months, you have to make a bronchial toilet, aspirate the secretions to avoid infections inside. That's the only problem. That's the hybrid stent. It's easy to be, we don't insert, it's quite expensive. It's a metallic stent, but covered with polyurethane covers, and it can be easily removed. In the bronchial ultrasound, that will be covered by the next speaker, Professor Semra, and she's going to cover it uh, during her talk. That's the uh, real time. Uh, actually, we don't have it in our department. We have the radial one. Uh, we have, if you're going to perform EBIS, she's going to discuss this, uh, Semra. Uh, you have to know the anatomy very well. You have to know the stations, the different paratracheal, subcarinal, etc. And it's important. Some some of the lymph nodes are not accessible by the EBIS, like the the three P and the three A, uh, even by media cystoscopy. So it's uh, it's a challenging and it's a very uh, fruitful tool in our armamentarium in diagnostics. But we face a problem in this. You need to have a good cytologist. If you don't have a good cytologist, he cannot interpret properly the, the lesion. So it's, it's very safe, it's very effective, and it's very diagnostic, and it's better than doing immediate stenoscopy, which is more invasive. invasive. Navigation is going to be covered as well tomorrow, because we have in the second session tomorrow at half past 11. Uh, however, in solitary pulmonary jewel, we can go through the different points. Either we wait, CT PET, uh, bronchoscopies, TNAs, uh, and then surgical biopsies, the VAT, the assisted thoracoscopic surgery, and at the end, thoracotomy. That's the step down and you, the ascendo of the techniques. Electromagnetic navigation, that's a new tool, and it's going to be covered as well tomorrow. And it depends if you know the GPS or the card is typical of GPS. You, uh, you program the patient, the virtual bronchoscopy, and then you get the, a road map. And the, uh, you navigate your, your forceps towards the node. It's very effective. The only disadvantage is very, very expensive. What's expensive is not the tool itself, it's the forceps and the navigation system. I think it's the cost is, if I'm not wrong, uh, the forceps will cost you 600 to 800 dollars per person. So it's quite difficult for our country to, to have this investigation. But it's very effective. The confocal microscopy, it's a non-invasive, that's something which is new, which, which is not available. It's, it's the optical biopsy. It's a non-invasive uh, histological tool. I got these slides from uh, Professor Dr. Ma'amun Ayadi from the States. And the image is obtained via a thin fiber optic probe. You insert it. It's one millimeter. You insert it into the channel of your scope. It's a laser around 480 millimeter, and it goes into 200 micron depths. And it gives you this. So this is a normal tissue. This is a normal opening of the gland opening, the mucous goblet glands, the mucous glands. This is the metaplasia which can happen before the early cancer development. That's the cancer inside. So you have to know the, the, what the, 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 uh, the picture to differentiate between the normal and abnormal. That's an, if you insert the probe into the periphery of the lung, you get this which is the uh, emphysematous like emphysema, and you have the reticulation here in interstitial fibrosis. So it's a very good tool in evaluation without taking a biopsy. That's the confocal So it's a promising technology, and it gives a potential future role in diagnosis of pre-malignant and malignant airways, and it's still on clinical trials. Uh, Bronchus thermopasli is, very, uh, is a new tool as well. And it's for the very resistant asthmatics. It breaks the muscle mass. <coughs> we don't have it in our uh, department as well because it's the the the, the force or the uh, the material which is used or the uh, the tool which is used is very very expensive. 
and uh, you put the uh, this is the uh, alert catheter it's you touch the airways you have the three divisions and it breaks this the muscle mass and it give it, it give it some space it, it, it relaxes the airway so that's the bronchial thermoplasty and it has been FDA approved the only problem with the uh, the thermoplasty that the first week the patient experienced a bad cough, some fever, more secretions, some wheezes, so he doesn't feel well the first week. After that, he can improve. So it improves the quality of life. Uh, the research on endobronchial therapy for emphysema that will be covered as well tomorrow by Professor Semra on the stenting of emphysema. Uh, that's central lobular emphysema and uh, you of we all of us we know the air trapping which can happen uh, before there was the uh, according to the net national emphysema treatment trial there was the uh, the lung surgery reduction surgery a lot of debate has been uh, through this issue of uh, resection of the lobes the the idea is if you have big bullets or emphysema in the upper lobes, you can retex them, so you give more inspiratory capacity and you get more dynamic uh, effect of the diaphragm, it can move more or less, but the mortality was high, you have, you, we don't do it in homogeneous emphysema, it's only if you have an upper lobe emphysema, and those who have a good exercise capacity, you don't perform this surgery, so it's been, it's been uh, criticized. Uh, now we, uh, we have the endobronchial valve, you insert the foreign body which is the stent, either you have the emphasis or we have the, uh, the spiration and the technique is very easy, it's very easy to apply this stent into the peripheral airways and you stent it this way and uh, it, it doesn't allow the air to go in but it allows air to escape and it allows secretions to go out of the uh, this. However, it has some complication. Some patients developed uh, uh, pneumothorax and some developed pneumonia. And that was the multi center pilot study on 91 patients. And uh, there has been no procedure more related mortality. Uh, morbidity was okay. However, pneumothorax developed in some of them six occurrence cough, COPD exacerbation, hemoptysis, and some of the patients developed pneumonia. This is one of the pictures. The patient developed pneumothorax after insertion of the stent here. So it, it can happen. Uh, but uh, this, uh, the efficacy of this study showed that, it, that the St. George Respiratory Questionnaire went to minus 8, and to have a positive effect, it should be more than minus 4, so it gives give a good improvement. It decreased the mean volume of the treated lobes. Regional perfusion was less. However, no change in FEV1, total lung capacity, and six-minute walk test. However, Samra is going to discuss this tomorrow with you in detail. So what's the future? If you have a note here, that's last slides, and that was from Mamouna Ayadi as well. And you go in with the navigation system. You, you get an adenocarcinoma. You can insert the probe. The, uh, frequency, radio frequency or the microwave, so you treat it in situ. Or if you have, and, uh, or you have this one, this patient, and uh, he presents with occasional hemoptysis, you perform the optical biopsy, and this is a normal tissue, so you don't have to perform any biopsy. So the future is bright. Uh, we have advances in diagnostic and therapeutic bronchus, although it's quite expensive to have all these tools. Uh, however, what we feel that innovations that disrupt current practice are always met with resistance. That's our culture, that everything which is new, we always criticize it. And thank you very much for your attention. أسني وأشكر أسني على المؤتمر والمنظمين 
واشكرهم على التنظيم الجميل ده هو وعلى دعوتنا للحضور ذا سكند سبيكر بروفيسور محمد عبد الصبور هو يتكلم سبيك اباوت بال هاو تو بيرفورم اند انكريز ريتيرن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اشكر الاستاذ دكتور طارق صفات والاستاذ الدكتور علي الخطاب على دعوتي ومعاهم الاستاذ الدكتور اشرف مذكور طبعا ان شاء الله نكون موفق وفرصه نشوف الناس يعني ان شاء الله ماي سبيتش از برونكا جوال لافيج مش عارف اتكلم ازاي في 15 دقيقه انا قعدت سنتين يا شباب برونكا جوال لافيج برونكا جوال لافيج از ا فيري سمبل انفستيجيشن تو كاري الفكرة is to collect a sample from the distal airspace, from the alveolar, what we call alveolar sampling. This procedure allows us to get uh, mediators, to get cells, to get minerals, to get uh, many uh, particular substances from the, from the soup, from the environment of the distal air, from the alveolar. This allows us to investigate, to diagnose, to monitor, even for research. Microbiology-wise, interstitial disease-wise, many varieties of disease. The problem is that if we don't have the standards of the standards of the procedure, we can't have cooperation with the scientists or with the biologists or with the microbiologists or with the psychologists who work with us after that, we don't have any scheme. I don't want to work with the doctor, but I don't want to work with the doctor, Mr. Dr. Hassan Hussain. والواحد يذكر الدكتور حسن حسني لما كان دايما يقول لنا برونكا جوال لافاج از ليكويد بايوبسي اوف ذا لانج. اتس نوت هيز اون ستيتمنت انما هو اللي كان دايما يفكرنا في الكلام ده. الواحد يفتكر ان هو من سنه 84 التو مين انديكيشنز اللي لا زالوا بيستخدموا البرونكا جوال لافاج او واخدين وايد سبريد اكسبتنس كان على حاجتين برونكا جوال لافاج ديفرنت لانج ديز كان الدكتور طاهر النجار كان الانترستيشال لانج ديزيز كان الكلام ده سنه 84 استاذ الدكتور حسن حسني كان استاذ الدكتور مختار مذكور الدكتور طارق صفط وكان اوبرتونستيك انفكشن في مين كومبرايز ديز بيشنتس ولا زال دول المين ستي للبرونكا جوال لافاج بغض النظر عن اللي طلع جديد والريسيرشز والبارامترز والانديكيشنز اللي بتطلع انما لا زال هم دول المين ستيز في برونكا جوال لافاج تو بيرفورم البرونكا جوال لافاج محتاجين حاجتين اول حاجه الماستر البرونكوسكوب اتسلف نمستر التكنيك بتاع البرونكو اجواء لافاج تاني حاجه اندرستاند الانديكيشنز والكونتر انديكيشنز زي ما بنقول كده مع انه فاليبل تكنيك و فيري هيلب فور ريسيرش بس اف يو كانوت تيك انتو كونسيدريشن ذيس جايد لاينز تكنيكال وايز كبروسيجر وكا هاندلنج للسامبل مايكروبيولوجي وايز سيتولوجي وايز وات ايفر ما يبدوش قيمه خالص بالعكس ممكن يكون بيردن على البيشنت ويزاوت اني بينفيت واحنا نذكر اذكر من فتره كده كنا جينا فتره في التسعينات كنا ناخد السيتولوجي وبعدين فوجئنا ان الريدنج بتاع السيتولوجي كان يعني فيري ايراتيك نوت كونكلوسيف وحتى ان السيتولوجيست ما كانش عارف احنا بندور عليه لغايه ما بقى في كوبريشن وبقينا عارفين احنا هو عايز من احنا عايزين منه ايه وعايز منه ايه هنقول بعض التيبس Very important. Hadrat kulluk wa shab microscopes. Now, the tips for the bronchial graft. The first thing is wedging. We have to avoid contamination of the sample of bronchial graft from the airways. One of the secret steps in successful bronchial graft is to keep wedged in bronchus, in a segmental or subsegmental box, all through the procedure. لو حصل منك نون ويدجنج هتبقى كونتيميتد بلارج اير واي وبالتالي يدي لك ميس انفورميشن عن السيلز وعن السيتولوجي وعن الماتيريال اللي انت بتركروت من الاير ويز. تاني حاجه التايم اوف ليتنج ذا انسالاين ذات يو هاف ميد انسايد ذا سيجمنت اور سب سيجمنت شود بي فيري مينيمال. يو جاست انجكت وانس يو انجكتد يو اسبري دونت ليف ذا فلويد فور ا لونج تايم. ثالث حاجة تسحب بقى دي المجنيتيوت اوف نيجاتيف بريشر. يو هاف نوت تو بي فيري 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 سيفير ساكشن وذ فيري سيفير ساكشن وبالتالي تعمل كولابس للديستال اير ويز 
ولا تبقى very loose it should, you should monitor you should adjust your suction power so as to get the fluid fluently this is number one number two don't do suction on the mucous membrane واحنا عارفين بنعمل suction ساعات وجهت في البرونكس ساعات تب بتاعت البرونكوسكوب تبقى stuck للميوكس ميمبرين بتاعت السيجمنت او السب سيجمنت وتبقى اما تعمل سكشن انت في الحقيقه بتعمل انجري وبتجيب بلاد اكتر وبتعمل ميس انفورميشن للستراتيجي اللي موجود. نعمل هاند سكشن ولا نعمل وول سكشن في بيبر طلعت طبعا ومشهوره ان الحكايه مش فارقه الحكايه بس بقى البريشر او النيجاتيف بريشر بنستخدمه اوبتمايز انما لما شافوا الانتربريتيشن بتاع البرونك اجوال سيلز او بتاع الريكفري وان البرونك اجوال بتاع سيلز او مينرالز او وات ايفر أو مايكروبيولوجي ما فرقتش إذا كان وول سكشن أو إذا كان هاند سكشن. نروح فين؟ نعمل السكشن نعمل البرونك أجواء اللي باجي منين؟ لو الموضوع ديفيوز ديزيز يوجوالي يو ريزورت تو ذا ميدل لوب أون ذا رايت سايد أور لينجل أون ذا ليفت سايد. لو في فوكال فوكال ليجن في اللنج يوجوالي وي دايركت أور سيلف تو ذا أريا ويز لوكال ليجن. هنا مثلا جاي باي ذا واي ان هو الفوكال ليجن موجود في الميدل لوب انما لو انا عندي الفوكال ليجن في الليفت لوور لوب او اللينج الناحيه الثانيه نو نيد طبعا نخش هنا ميدل لوب بالتالي لازم نخش على الحته اللي فيها فوكال ليجن انما لو حكايه ديفيوز زي دي كده يو ار يو هاف ذا تشويس تو جو تو ذا رايت ميدل لوب اور تو ذا لينج اون ذا ليفت سايد سواء هنا او هنا رايت ميدل لوب على الرايت سايد واللينج على الليفت سايد دول ار ذا اريا اوف بريفيرنس فور برونكو الجوال ليفرش ليه؟ اول حاجه اكسسبل فيري اكسسبل ثاني حاجه الريتريفل او الريكروتمنت بتاع الفلويد منهم اعلى ما بنخش الابر لوب او نخش اللور لوب في الافريج الريتريفل بحوالي 60% ديبندنج على انت دخلت اني سيجمنت دخلت اني لوب وعلى الاندرلاينج باثولوجي يعني دخلت لور لوب مثلا يبقى اقل اكيد من الميدل لوب دخلت لوور لوب وفي اللوور لوب في انفيزيما او في فايبروزيس او في فارد وانسد برونكيتاتيك ارياز هيبقى ريتريفر قليل جدا داون تو 10% ساعات ما بنبقاش عارفين نجيب اكتر من كده. طبعا ده الميدل لوب الناس كلهم اورينتد دي البي 4 بي 5 دي البي 6 الابيكال الابيكال سيجمنت اوف دي لوور لوب وده اللوور لوب بروبر يوجوالي وي Do the wedging in the middle lobe, either the middle lobe itself, or we then push up to the subsegment, which is called medial or lateral. We do the wedging, we do the lavage from this segment. On the left side, the lingula, which will be four and five, the lingula, the upper lobe, the posterior and anterior segment. We then push the lingula, and then we do the wedging. It is like that, very easy, and the recruitment is very good, up to sixty percent. ده لو احنا بنقول كده احنا بنشوف آه بلين اكس راي ان بعض الحالات دلوقتي احنا في عندنا الهاي ريزوليشن سي تي سكان وده كورنر ستون في الايفالويشن اوف اني انترستيشن لانج ديزيز وبالتالي بعض الانفستيجيتورز دلوقتي بيريكومند ان بيفور دوينج البرونك اجوال لافاش تو هاف ا لوك ات ذا هاي ريزوليشن سي تي سكان We look for areas of nodulation, area of ground glass, the area that is suspected to have active disease. We are doing the lavage rather than the areas with fibrosis and with trabeculations and with end stage disease. Most of these will be fibrotic areas. The areas that have activity, more or less, we are expecting to get cells more informative of the underlying disease. Now, in a day. الليتريتشر مختلف جدا انما اون ذا افريج 150 ام ال اما بتبقى اليكوتس اوف 20 ام ال او اليكوتس اوف 60 ام ال زي ما قلنا كده جاست انجكت و دي اسبريت طبعا في بعض الحالات زي البروتينوز بنعمل هول لانج لافاج زي ما هنشوف بعد كده انما الافريج 150 ام ال وبنكسبكت ان احنا نجيت 60% اوف ذيس Uh, injected fluid depending on pathology or the segment. ناخد كل الفلويد اللي حتى اللي عندنا وات بعض الانفستيجيتورز يقولوا we have to discard the first specimen saying that this specimen is more or less of bronchial origin. وبالتالي discard وياخدوا second with third لو هم 150 أو 180 ويدوروا الالفيرال سامبلينج اللي احنا بن search for. لما كثير من البيبرز كثير من البيبرز لقيت ان مفيش فرق بين ان احنا نديسكارد الفيرست اليكوت وان احنا نميكس الاول اليكوتس كثير من الممبرز بتريكومند لا ميكس اول ذا ثري اند ذير از نو ديفرنس ان ذا كومبوننتس اوف ذا بونكال بيور 
لفاج از اگر سلس مایکروبولوژی او انگریدینس ساید افکس او هی ساید افکس طبعا موستلی ریتیز از پرونکوسکوپ حقاش اللي ريتد دي اللافاج تبقى ريتد دي انت عملت اسبريشن من اني سيجمنت والاماونت كانت قد ايه والتمبرشر بتاعت اللافاج يوجوالي نسميه ورم سلاين عشان يبقى بدرجه حراره الجو بعد اللافاج بعد البونكر فيرل بس ساعات يحدث بعض المليز بعض لو جريد فيفر بعض الاكس وده يبقى ريتد لريليس اوف ميدييتورز او برو ميدييتورز من البونكر فيرل لافاج زي ما قلنا كده most of the literature now is speaking of bronchial alveolar from the research background of view. يعني كثير من الحالات اللي بتتعمل في البرونكيال فاج just for research انما application ك practice it is very difficult to get it. ال main two entities هو الانفكشنز هو الانترستيشن لانجزيز. انفكشن وايز طبعا on the top is infection immunocompromised patients وال second thing is infection بالذات ال VAB وال nosocomial infections. في كلام على طبعا مش هنخش في تفاصيل كتير عشان خاطر ال 15 دقيقه انما مثلا على ان سمير نيجاتيف توبركوز في الاتش اي في فيري افكتيف ليهم ان نعمل لهم برونكا الفيرال لافاج الناس دول ويبقى فيري افكتيف ان يدياجنوز الناس اللي بيطلعوا سمير نيجاتيف جاست لافاج الانسدنس اوف بوزيتيفيتي للدياجنوز اوف توبركوز في ذيس بيشنت از فيري هاي الانفيزيف برونكا بالمونا اسبيريال بوزيس فور اكزامبل في السي او بي دي بيشنتس جاست باي ماركر نوت باي ايزوليشن اوف اورجانيزم اوف هاوسنج بلاك جاست باي ماركر جلاكتو مانان في كلام على سمول فوليوم لافاج يعني انا مش داوتنج مثلا نيموسيس كاين يعني نيمونيا بعيان اتش اي في ذير از نو نيد تو اكسبوز ذا بيشنت تو 150 300 200 ام ال سالاين تو بي انجكتد اند اسبيريشن جاست 60 ام ال ويل بي سفيشنت تو ديجنوز نيموسيسكا نيمونيا باي امينوفلوريسنس نيجي القصه المهمه بالنسبه للاي سي يو الفاب نيمونيا اب تو ناو ما فيش كونسنسس قد ايه بقى انفيزيف في الدياجنوز الفاب نيمونيا وقد ايه نبقى كونزرفاتيف نبتدي امبيريكال نعمل انفيزيف بروسيدير انما الامريكان ثراتيك ستادي بيت ريكومند يبقى مور اور ليس انفيزيف ونعمل كونتيتيف كالتشر فابتدى الناس تتكلم طب انا عندي عيان في الاي سي يو كل يومين ثلاثة أعمل له برونكو برونكوسكوب وبرونكو ألفوال لافاش فابتدأ يطلع كلام على النون برونكوسكوبيك برونكو ألفوال لافاش. وات از فيري 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 افكتيف فيري انفورماتيف بالذات في الفاب نيمونياز في الاي سي يوز وليها ميزة أول حاجة إنها فيري جود اكسبتبل التيرناتيف للبرونكوسكوبي تاني حاجة إنها انكسبنسيف طبعا انكسبنسيف ليس نيد ليس اكسبيرينس مش دول واحد يعرف برونكوسكوب ولا حاجة و ميزتها انها ريبيتابل ممكن اعملها النهارده وبكره وبعده بحيث ان انا افولو العيان دوت قد ايه الاورجانيزم اللي عنده بيتغير او قد ايه السنسيفيتي بتاعه بيتغير ولقوا ان الاثنين فيري افكتيف وبالتالي في الباب نيمونيا وي كان ريزورت تو نان برونكوسكوبيك برونكال فيرل لافاج راذر ذان برونكوسكوبيك برونكال فيرل لافاج فكرتها سهله احنا مش هناخد تفاصيل انا بتبقى الاول الاسطره دي اللي هي ايه دي تدكك من الانتركيال تشوب وبعدين دي تخش جواها والتب بتاعتها بالتراب ديت بيسحب السكيشن جاست انجكس لاين وزي البرونكر فيرل لافاج بالظبط وان ساتش حصل جاست حصل ويدجنج للانر تشيز دي نعمل انجكشن ونتريف الايه؟ السلاين. دي تاني. في الانترستيشن لانج ديزيز فيري انفورماتيف طبعا فيري فيري انفورماتيف. البرونكال لافاج الواحد في الانترستيشن لانج ديزيز از نوت از نوت ذا كي باي اول مينز وي هاف تو بي فيري كيرفول وي هاف تو كومباين ذا كلينيكال داتا ذا هاي ريجيشن سيت سكان اند ذا سيلولار بروفايل اوف ذا برونكال الفيرال لافاج الانتربريتيشن اوف ذا انفورميشن جاذرد باي سيتولوجي مايكروبيولوجي مينرالوجي وات ايفر شود بي ذا كوبريشن بيتوين ذا برونكوسكوبيست اند ذا الناس اللي في المعمل التكنيشن الساينتست ولا مش بقى ليه قيمه خالص اللي فاش ولازم يبقى في ديالوج في كونفرزيشن ما بيننا وبينهم احنا بندور على ايه وهم متوقعين لو ايه. الحكايه فيها كونتروفيرسي شديد جدا كل شويه نلاقي بيبر تطلع تقول هو الجولد ستاندرد فور فولو اب فور تريتمنت از برونكر فاش ولا ناس يقول لا لا ات از نوت يت في 2009 
paper for current opinion of pulmonary medicine, whereas bronchial research findings continue to impact on understanding disease pathogenesis, and this may be its major use now. Bronchial research fluid component cells, in particular, are not correlated well with the activity of disease, nor with monitoring disease progress or response to treatment. For a few cases, the essential lung disease, or the essential lung disease, bronchial research characteristics may strongly support the diagnosis. We still have the biopsies. Lazari biopsies is indispensable in the case of the disease, in the case of inflammatory conditions with fibrosis conditions. في حالات فور شور دايجنوز باي برونكا الفيروس زي البرونكا الفيروس زي الالوار بوتينوز واللانج هانز هيستوسايتوزيس في المانجمنت اه ليها رول في المانجمنت ان احنا ممكن نقول والله انشيت ايه واثناء التريتمنت نغير او نمونيتور الديزيز والفارمولوجيكال ديزيز زي مثلا الديجري اوف زينفيليا مثلا كورليتنج ويل مع الهايبر سيفيل نورايتس والانترستيشال بالموني فيروس مثلا البرونكا الفيرال لافاج مثلا ايزونفيليا في مور بتقول ان في مور سيفيز او في انترستيشال لانج ديزيز لو في انكريز نيوتروفيز مثلا في عالم السايكوزيس نعرف البروجنوز هيبقى سيء نبقى عارفين الريسبونس للايميون سبريسف دراجز ويل نوت بي ذات ذات جود ده زي ما قلنا كده الهول لانج لافاج في حالات البانوريا فيرال بوتينوزيس اخر حاجه اخر سلايد اللي انا لازلت متخيل ان هي valid till now, D means 87. What we call in the bronchial leverage is still in its infancy. And we have just يعني, examined the iceberg of the, of the procedure. We list an hour back. We have a lot of literature, calam, investigations, predictors, settler, mineral settler. So we have a lot of information that we have to do in the clinical application. Thank you. Shukran, Dr. Muhammad, for a very informative talk about the BAL. I know the time is uh, was short for this important uh, talk. So let me invite uh, our dear uh, uh, visitor, Professor Samra from Izmir. Uh, professor Samra, Samra is professor of pulmonology, uh, pulmonary department at Izmir University. Uh, she's responsible for the training and research hospital for thoracic medicine and surgery. And she's the bionic lady in the uh, European Association of Bronchology and Intervention of Pulmonolo Pulmonology. Welcome, Samra, and uh, we'll enjoy your talk. Dear colleagues, dear friends, first of all, I want to thank you and say shukran giddan to my friend Tariq Safat and also Dr. Ashraf Majkur and the whole organizing committee for inviting me again to this conference. Uh, it's my third time in Egypt and it won't be the last time. It is always a pleasure to be here among friends. Uh, secondly, I want to apologize for my voice. Three days ago I woke up and I saw that I lost my voice. <laughs> it's just upper respiratory infection but if my voice gets tired, I apologize. Uh, let's start the talk. Uh, EBUS tBNA, is it the end of conventional, uh, TB, uh, conventional tBNA? Let's, let's first ask some questions. Is EBUS tBNA the only way? Is conventional tBNA passe or obsolete out of mode? Should all bronchoscopists buy EBUS? Should we continue to train pulmonary fellows with conventional tBNA? We will answer these questions at the end of my talk. As you all know, there are different methods to adjust and guide tBNA, conventional tBNA. The nostalgic fluoroscopy, CT-guided methods, and nowadays the most popular one, uh, the third one, and the bronchial ultrasound EBUS, electromagnetic navigation, PET-CT, PET virtual bronchoscopy, CT fluoroscopy, and real-time bronchoscopic deposition technology. There is no doubt uh, that EBUS tBNA is a great technology. That's for sure. Uh, let's see the virtues of EBUS tBNA. What are they? EBUS tBNA has higher diagnostic yield than conventional tBNA, CT, PET for mediastinal staging. 
It is useful especially for leaf nodes that are less than 10 millimeters. It has replaced mediastinoscopy for lung cancer staging, but this depends on the prevalence of the disease, the severity of the disease, or the size of the lymph node or size of the mass, and also depends on the performance or the skills of the performer. Endoscopic ultrasound plus EBUS can sample all stations of interest regarding staging. It can also restage lung cancer, and it is also useful in staging uh, of CT or PET-negative mediastinum. I just want to review which lymph nodes we can sample by using endoscopic ultrasound, guided fine needle aspiration, and EBUS guided tBNA. For endoscopic ultrasound guided uh, fine needle aspiration, we can only sample upper, lower paratracheal lymph nodes on the left, subcarinal lymph nodes, uh, and A10-9 ligament lymph nodes and paraesophageal lymph nodes bilaterally. On the other hand, by using EBUS tBNA, we can sample bilateral upper and lower paratracheal lymph nodes, subcarinal lymph nodes, bilateral hilar lymph nodes, but we cannot sample 5-6 by both of them. What are the fringes of EBUS tBNA? Yes, it's more appealing, it's real-time, it has argumented interests in interventional pulmonology, it improves skills for conventional transbronchial needle aspiration, and EBUS tBNA is exploring other indications such as pulmonary embolism, rare tumors, traversing vessels, therapeutic applications. However, when I look into literature, I see that EBUS-related articles uh, have been in the number of 653 since 1978, and in the last 10 years, there are 500 articles on EBUS and EBUS tBNA. On the other hand, conventional tBNA, we have only 264 articles in 56 years. Look at the numbers when you compare. Uh, the conventional tBNA papers are very little in number. Let's look at the virtues of conventional tBNA. Conventional tBNA can get histology specimens, but EBUS tBNA cannot get histology specimens. It gets cytological specimens, but we can make cell cores with them. Uh, conventional method is inexpensive uh, regarding startup cost. It doesn't require general anesthesia. It is inexpensive requiring, uh, regarding needle or skill acquisition. Station 7, subcarinal, 4R, uh, and lymph nodes that are greater than 20 millimeters can uh, be sampled by conventional method with the same yield as EBUS tBNA does. So for stations subcarinal and right lower paratracheal and lymph nodes that are greater than 20 millimeters, we can get the same yield by conventional tBNA as EBUS tBNA gets. For small cell lung cancer, conventional method is exclusively diagnostic in 25% of the cases. And for conventional tBNA, staging is not the only indication. It can be used for diagnostic purposes, and conventional method has shorter learning curve. It's more easier to learn. When we look at the usefulness of conventional tBNA, the accuracy of conventional method in diagnosing and staging lung cancer is 6 to 60 to 90 percent in tuberculous lymphadenitis, whether it's HIV positive or negative, the diagnostic accuracy is 50 to 85 percent. Uh, in stage 1 and 2 sarcoidosis, it is exclusively diagnostic in 20 to 60 percent of the cases, and the total accuracy is 54 to 65 percent. In restaging lung cancer, we can use conventional method and get a diagnostic yield of 71%. And conventional tBNA has been shown to obviate mediastinoscopy in 25 to 30% of the patients. When we look at the mediastinal staging by conventional tBNA, we see that the sensitivity of the conventional method depends on the prevalence of the mediastinal involvement. Uh, by prevalence, I mean the size of the lymph node or the severity, the amount of the disease. 
When the disease gets more, more severe or when the prevalence is higher, you see the sensitivity goes higher. So sensitivity depends on the prevalence of the disease, but specificity is not affected at all. To increase the diagnostic yield of conventional TBNA, electromagnetic navigation has been used. For peripheral lesions, the diagnostic yield is 74%. For central lesions, for mediastinal central lesions, the diagnostic yield has been shown to be 100%. Uh, by a study done by Atul Mehta and Tom Gilda. So TBNA is also used for peripheral lesions with an electromagnetic uh, navigation guidance. To increase the conventional uh, TBNA yield, CT fluoroscopy has been used and the yield is 80 to 88 percent. Other applications? Peripheral lesions. Peripheral lesions can be diagnosed by using uh, transbronchial needle aspiration, the conventional method. You see four different types of lesions here, type 1, type 2, type 3, and 4. Type 1, here the bronchus, leading bronchus is open to the tumor, and type 2, also it's open to the tumor. This is called cutoff sign, but the bronchus is open to the tumor. The type 2 is contained within the tumor, uh, so again open. Type 4 and type, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, type 3 and type 4, the bronchus is not open to the tumor. So in all four of them, transbronchial needle aspiration can give you a diagnostic result, uh, but especially in type 3 and type 4, where the bronchus is not open to the tumor, conventional method is exclusively diagnosed, diagnostic. In, four, all, all, in all four of them, conventional methods can be used, but especially in type 3 and type 4, conventional TBNA is exclusively diagnostic. Uh, in others, you can use transbronchial biopsy, bronchoalveolar lavage, brushing in these two, but in the in type 3 and 4, transbronchial biopsy, uh, bronchoalveolar lavage, or brushing won't give you any yield. So, this is another application for transbronchial needle aspiration. Other applications, when you have hemorrhagic or necrotic lesions in the bronchioli, although it's not the main indication of conventional TBNA, you can use endobronchial needle aspiration for the endobronchial tumor that is bleeding too much. Say in the main bronchus you have a very bleeding tumor and you're afraid to get a biopsy, you can just directly go into that main bronchus tumor that is bleeding, that is threatening, go into the core of the uh, tumor and get endobronchial needle aspiration and it's very safe. And when the tumor is very necrotic, maybe you have experienced it, you get a big biopsy and the pathologist says no, non-diagnostic, necrotic, do it again. And then you say you do it again because you know the patient may not accept it. So when the tumor is necrotic, you can again go into the core of the tumor and get uh, viable, better tissue. And again, uh, when there is crush artifact, TBNA does not cause crush artifact. If you try to avoid crush artifact when you are getting biopsy, use TBNA. Other applications, we can use conventional TBNA in ICU setting. We can sample submucosal biopsy. We can uh, sample submucosal lesions by using uh, transbronchial needle aspiration. And the bronchial injection of steroids can be done by using transbronchial catheter. Aspiration of mediastinal cysts have been done by using transbronchial aspiration needle. What are the essentials of EBUS TBNA? The scope is large. It has a 30 degree view. Uh, it has a suboptimal resolution, suboptimal suction. The needle has 18 steps. The processor has 25 knobs or buttons. The image requires acquisition and interpretation. This is the difficult part. It doesn't go. I cannot proceed. So I won't go all these 19 steps, but 18, 18 steps. 18 steps for EVAS. This is a little bit difficult to uh, go through. Uh, so transbronchial needle aspiration, when you compare it with EVAS, does not have all these steps. EVAS is good, EVAS is important, but when you see all these 18 steps, it's not so easy as conventional method. 
And the 19th method is use your skills from conventional method. Uh, they are not very different. We always um, separate EBUS tBNA and conventional tBNA. No, the basic thing is the same. We only add EBUS or endobronchial ultrasound to conventional tBNA. Uh, we are just guiding conventional tBNA using a little bit better or modern needle to use our skills for conventional tBNA. EBUS tBNA learning curve has been studied uh, and it's published in chest. Okay. EBUS tBNA learning curve has been studied and two expert bronchoscopists in a university hospital did the study on 120 patients in 13 months and it has, shown, it has been shown that uh, EBUS tBNA requires 41 to 60 procedures to get an accuracy of 83 percent. So it requires time, it requires experience, uh, more time, more experience than transbronchial needle aspiration. Regarding EBUS learning curve, learning curve for EBUS tBNA may indeed be longer than expected. There is perhaps, perhaps an argument for all specialist societies to specify a minimum number of at least 100 EBUS tBNA procedures until this question is further definitely answered. These are not my words. These are the words of Dr. Medford, and this is published in chat. And the study is done on 160 patients over 18 months. For EBUS tBNA performance, Acquiring skills is required in 50 to 100 patients. Interventional pulmonology fellowship, preceptorship, hands-on courses are required. Maintaining skills requires 50 procedures per year, and it should be done in center of excellences. And uh, more than 70% bronchoscopists have uh, performed it, and less than 100 procedures per year uh, is done in the center of excellences. Time consumption is 90 minutes by EBUS tBNA versus 30 minutes by conventional tBNA. Optimal outcome requires anesthesia support and rapid on-site evaluation for EBUS tBNA. Cost of EBUS tBNA, the startup cost is $100,000 to $200,000. The needle by itself costs $100 or 300 euros versus 45 dollars for conventional needle. Maintenance cost for EBUS is 100 dollars. Uh, this is studied uh, in an uh, article. Cost for general anesthesia and rapid on-site evaluation is another problem for EBUS tBNA, but downstream effects have value to your institution. This means EBUS tBNA may be expensive but in time it attracts patients and when you have more patients the hospital gains more money. This is the downstream effect, that is the beneficial effect. And another study mentions about cost effectiveness again. The most cost effective approach is do transbronchial needle aspiration first, conventional method. Then if you cannot get a diagnostic result, do EBUS guided tBNA whether it's real-time or uh, EBUS-guided tBNA, both can be used. If, again, uh, they are not diagnostic, go and do mediastinoscopy or surgery. This type of combined approach, tBNA, then EBUS real-time, and then mediastinoscopy gives you the most cost-effective approach. This is, again, from a, another study, and it says newer techniques will be developed, but until now, according to our calculations, EBUS tBNA performed after the conventional method is the most effective approach for staging the mediastinum. And these people are the people who do and who advocate EBUS uh, a lot, Ralph Eberhardt, Felix Hurt, and Peter Kutz. So let's come to the questions. Mm. When conventional tBNA, when EBUS tBNA? Standard scope is used before every EBUS scope. So why not perform conventional tBNA followed by EBUS tBNA if ROSE is not available? This is possible. You can always do conventional bronchoscopy with conventional tBNA, and then if the result is not 
positive, you can always do EBUS tBNA. If ROSE is available in your institution, you can go and do first conventional method. If not diagnostic, then you can go and do EBUS tBNA. If it's diagnostic, you don't need EBUS. And there should be a comparative study of whether EBUS tBNA is the standard or is it a rescue after non-diagnostic conventional tBNA. There is no study till now. Conventional tBNA is not passé. There are newer needles, Supertrex needles, that is brought to market in 2012 to make it better in diagnostic yield, and needle brush, again, in the market in 2012, and the nostalgic brick needle in 1991. All of them are trying to bring better diagnostic yield to this conventional method. Virtual bronchoscopy has been uh, studied virtual bronchoscopy navigation to guide conventional transbronchial needle aspiration has been studied in different studies and it's also promising for future. Future applications, this study was, was, was done by Dr. Ahmed Halfavi and colleagues and the bronchial injection of botulinum toxin for the reduction of bronchial hyperreactivity induced by metacoline inhalation in dogs. This in the future can be applied to humans. EBUS tBNA versus conventional tBNA. Conventional tBNA is for the conventional program. EBUS tBNA is for the centers of excellences. This is from the acquired data. Continue to learn and teach conventional tBNA to all. This is an analogy similar to chest X-ray versus CT. In the end, it's all tBNA. They are not different from each other. When to use image-guided tBNA? For smaller mediastinal lip nodes that are less than 1 cm or say that are less than 1.5 cm, use image-guided tBNA. It can be electromagnetic navigation-guided, EBUS-guided, or other method. For difficult and less accessible lymph nodes, what are they? Upper paratracheal lymph nodes, 1, 2, 4L, lower left paratracheal ligament lymph nodes, or paraesophageal lymph nodes. For these, you can use image-guided tBNA because a conventional tBNA cannot access or give good results. When lymph node mobility is a problem, when uh, the patient is breathing, sometimes breathing is so fast, although you know the best place to puncture during bronchoscopy, the needle deviates. It doesn't go to the uh, right target because of the respiratory motion. So when this is a problem, you can use image-guided tBNA. Or after failing conventional tBNA, you can go and do image-guided tBNA. Let's answer the questions. Is EBUS tBNA the only way? No. Conventional method is a valid alternative. Is conventional tBNA passé or obsolete? No. Conventional tBNA maintains its application. Should all bronchoscopists buy EBUS if resources and expertise can be gathered? Yes. Should we continue to train pulmonary fellows with conventional method? It's a big yes. Comets, because it should be done, it doesn't mean it should be done. It's similar to sarcoid. For example, uh, in some sarcoid patients, stage one sarcoid, you know by, uh, at the beginning that it's sarcoid. You don't have to go and do biopsy. It's similar to that analogy. You can do it, but do you have to do it? Lung ailments is an international phenomenon, so more in developing countries. We have to think about this. Our recommendations should be inclusive of all considerations, not just specific situations. Reducing healthcare care costs is civic responsibility, and uh, especially general anesthesia and growth increases the cost. Be aware of the procedure in search of a CPD code, and no procedure should be performed just to maintain skills. And conventional tBNA is not out of mode, not obsolete. Uh, I got this sentence from respiration. They are, the sentence is said by Trizolini and Stefano Gasparini. While waiting to buy a Ferrari, do not leave your current car in the garage. Or, my words, make new friends but keep the old. And I want to make two announcements, if I have time. Uh, I'm the secretary of the European Association for Bronchology and Interventional Pulmonology, IABIP. The website is here. 
There are IP related, international criminology related links there. There are international criminology meeting announcements, and you can get a member uh, through that membership uh, site. And also, we have the journal respiration, and you, we have different membership types. Uh, one is just EABIP membership, the other is EABIP MABIP combined membership, and you can get subscribed to respiration and respirology through the, these different membership types. And uh, there is another announcement. We did the second EABIP Congress in Turkey this year in Çeşme. It was a nice meeting, I think. And we will do the third one in Çeşme again in 2017. At the beginning, the boardroom was set, but Çeşme is a better uh, site. It's more convenient site, so we decided to have it in Çeşme in 2017. I invite all of you to my meeting there. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Professor Samra, for your excellent expose. And I, I do apologize, although Professor Samra did not take the all the allowed time, but we still we are behind schedule. I'm awfully sorry. Maybe the comments and the question you can contact the speakers during lunch. Now we'll move to the uh, third session. There is a parallel session already. The session of the uh, sleep disorders already started 15 minutes before in Hall B. And now we have here in Hall A the session of pleural disease and thoracoscopy. It's my own pleasure uh, to invite the first speaker, Professor Mohammed Abdel Hakim, Professor of Pulmonary Medicine, Qasr al Aini, Cairo University, and he will talk to us about the advanced techniques in medical thoracoscopy.